Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand forex and gold fundamental and technical analysis. If you're new, a warm welcome to you and if you're returning, an equally warm welcome to you and if you enjoy and find the content I provide useful every week, please don't forget to like, subscribe and share. It's a free way to uh, really support the channel and get the quality content out to you know the traders that uh, that really need uh, this kind of information where we combine fundamentals and technicals to make the best trading decisions. So before we get into the nitty gritty, um, I just wanted to really answer and go over this uh, poll that I uh, put out about a month ago. And uh, the question is, what does a dovish central bank want to do with the valuation of the currency and 24% of people said make the currency appreciate and 76% said make the currency depreciate and the 76% of you out there who voted for that um, make the currency depreciate are absolutely correct and um, this is really important a lot of traders generally will not really understand why they should know this stuff and this stuff is a uh, and when I say this stuff, I mean fundamental analysis, because in the medium to long term, this is what drives uh, the value of a currency. Now, um, a dovish central bank will want the valuation uh, of the currency to depreciate. Why is that? The reason why that is, is because, uh, sorry, if I go to the next slide, all right? Um, actually, matter of fact, first of all, before we get into what why there is hawkish, let's let's get into what hawkish and dovish actually is. So, hawkish policymakers tend to focus on controlling inflation as a primary goal of monetary policy. Monetary policy meaning whether they're hiking, holding, or cutting interest rates. Dovish policies are more concerned with promoting economic growth and job creation. So, hawks and doves both use interest rates to achieve their policy goals. So, a haw so a dovish um, if if, if the central bank is dovish on policies, they're more concerned with promoting economic growth. And what they need to do is actually, when they're promoting economic growth, is make the, 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 the value of the currency devalue, right? And depreciate. They don't want an expensive currency, yeah? You do not want an expensive currency in um, in a recession when you're promoting, trying to promote economic growth, right? And job creation. In fact, you want a, a cheaper currency. So a dovish um uh, uh, central bank, yeah, is concerned with depreciating the currency. As we go back to the uh, 72, right, they make they're, they're concerned about making the currency depreciate. Yeah, they don't want the currency to appreciate because an appreciating currency is not um, advantageous when promoting economic growth. Yeah. Anyways, let's get on to uh, what we usually do and what we're here for, uh, which is um, understanding the fundamentals and the way that we trade the trading 180 and fundamental analysis we use to establish directional bias and um, applying the technical analysis strategies like supply and demand for uh, to time trade entries, establish profit targets and risk management. So this week, in the week ahead, let's zoom in a little bit. Uh, all eyes turn to the US employment report next week, which is going to be very important, um, which will probably add to signs of a continued labor market recovery, as well as worldwide manufacturing and services, PMI service survey, sorry, and second quarter GDP updates for Canada, Brazil, Australia, um, and Switzerland is what we're concerned with. So Canada, Australia, and Switzerland are the pairs that we are, some of the pairs that we look at. Elsewhere, key data to watch for include US factory orders and construction spending, Eurozone inflation, that's gonna be important, and business morale, Germany retail sales, Japan industrial production and consumer confidence, and Australia and India foreign trade figures. So um, lots to watch out for, even though uh, we do have a bank holiday here in the UK, the markets will probably be quiet, but I think towards the end of the week, the main um, uh, data really to watch is US employment. And we'll get into, I guess, the uh, Jackson Hole in a sec, but it's really important for 
uh, the US to look to potentially, if they're looking to taper and hike rates, that employment, yeah, continues to grow. But we'll get into that as we look at the charts. Anyways, guys, let's get into, in fact, the uh, technicals and looking at the dollar index and the dollar index. So, uh, so this week, from a technical analysis perspective, um, we've, you know, we're basically on a bit of a pullback. You think about when you see uh, what we've been doing since, you know, May, been on this, you know, higher highs, higher lows being made, right? And we're basically on a pullback, right? So um, the, the the question is, is is where will prices go, you know, in, in the medium to long term? In the short term, prices can be very random. And this is due to uh, banks accumulating liquidity hunts, um, and trying to avoid really slippage, right? But uh, in the medium to long term, uh, we should want to see a higher dollar if the data supports the narrative. So the data, as far as positive economic data, will pressure the um, Federal Reserve to want to actually look to taper. And tapering, which is reducing bond purchases, is positive for a currency. So you should, again, see prices go higher if the data supports the narrative if jobs confirm that the economy is growing so let's look at what happened uh, this week so the, the all eyes were on jackson hole and powell says taper could start in 2021 so this year with no rush uh, on rate hike so reductions sorry reductions uh, not intended to signal as a signal, sorry, on rate hikes, he says, and Fed Chair speaks Friday on Virtual Jackson Hole Symposium. So the Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell said the central bank could begin to reduce or begin reducing its monthly bond purchases this year, though it won't be in a hurry to begin raising rates thereafter. Yeah, so basically the, the economy has now met the test of substantial further progress towards the Fed's inflation objective that Powell and his colleagues said would be a precondition for tapering the bond buying while the labor market has also made clear progress, the Fed chair, uh, chief said Friday in a virtual speech to uh, to the Kansas City uh, Fed's annual Jackson Hole Symposium. So um, again, the economy, they're saying the economy is on the right path and if it continues, then what you should see is, again, a reduction in bond purchases, which actually is positive or should be positive for a, a currency because that should lead to a rate hike at some point in the future. And rate hikes are designed to appreciate uh, well, the effect of a rate hike uh, is to appreciate the currency right now. Again, none of us know. Nobody knows what prices are going to do in the short term. Yeah, but in the medium to long term, you'll start to see prices play out. So then you can start to say, all right, then I want to be long. Where do you want to be long? Right. Is it going to be this level? Yep. Does it work out? Nobody knows. But if it does, then brilliant. If it doesn't, then you're looking at this demand zone. And really demand zones are just areas of potential and past uh, bargains. Right. Because we know for a fact that prices down here at this point on the dollar index, which is a measure of dollar strength against other, you know, major currencies like the euro, the yen, the pound, um, you know, made higher highs from here. So it was seen as an absolute bargain. Now, if prices come back down to one of these demand zones, is it going to be seen as another bargain? And if it is, then brilliant, you know, if you're if you're long. Now, again, there is always the um, the uh, the possibility that jobs comes out as negative, right? And if it comes out as negative, what that means is that the tapering uh, for the Fed, uh, the Fed tapering probably may be delayed and then the market has to reprice what the, the, what the dollar is worth if the Fed do not taper this year, right? And that would probably mean more of a sell-off. And there's no technical analysis uh, zones. Although we use technical analysis to enter and exit trades and uh, to scale in and out, etc., 
There's no technical analysis that's going to work if you don't get the fundamentals and sentiment right. This is the reason why we focus on the fundamentals because it gives us an overall direction, and path of least resistance and the trend. We can identify these trends, which I've been talking about since around here, buying the dollar, since you can go back to my videos around this time period here. And I've said that we were gonna go long on the dollar. And this is because at the time, um, uh, Jerome Powell, Federal Reserve signaled at tapering, right? They signaled at tapering here. This is the reason for this price action. And that's the reason why if you were buying the dollar, all you had to really look for is just demand zones, not necessarily on the dollar index, but on other dollar uh, currency uh, crosses. But the point being is that we have to understand what's going on fundamentally, yeah? And risk sentiment wise for us to determine the direction of travel and then decide whether we want to be long at demand zones or short at supply zones. Now, I will change my bias if, for example, you know, the, the data is poor in the, in, in the short term and try to maybe look for supply zones. But as long as the data supports the narrative, I mean, the path of least resistance is to the upside on the dollar. Anyways, uh, looking to the dollar yen and dollar yen. Again, we're in between really this uh, this demand and supply zone. Um, uh, again, I, my bias is to the to the upside. And you can pretty much see what's been happening. We did get a bit of a pullback, and there is a uh, um, you know prices have been making higher highs. But for me, uh, waiting for a bit more of a pullback before looking at getting long, if I can, this 109 area, probably down to this 108, 60, 40 area is really ideal uh, for a nice buy if we can come down there. Um, if you do want to get short, I would probably say the best area is the 11, starting from maybe the 11, 111 area to 111.60 for a short uh, trade. And again, that's really based off of either dollar weakness based off the expectation of a of, of a, uh, a, a rate uh, high core tapering or for example risk off sentiment you know prevailing and risk off sentiment is um uh the, the japanese yen is basically a flat to safety and the japanese yen will tend to benefit from in a risk off environment moving on to the dollar swiss pretty similar um to the uh, dollar yen when it comes to fundamentals you understand that you know you really want to be buying you know the dollar at the moment again not financial advice i can always say what i'm doing regardless of what this big scary engulfing candle is saying um all this means is that i can buy the dollar for potentially cheaper right so there's an opportunity to buy the dollar in and around here my preferred level would definitely be in and around here if um, you know, the dollar and the data uh, still supports the narrative of a Fed taper. So um, for me, these are the two areas that I'm looking at uh, getting involved in. Um, but if, again, sentiment does change, then getting short at supply zones, I think this would probably be a bit of a supply zone, not the strongest area of supply at the moment, but um, potentially it could be if it continues to you know fall here then that would be a decent area of supply before uh, maybe looking at a pullback and then getting short around there um but again for me i'm looking at probably more long trades the long direction dollar cad uh dollar cad last week did actually sell off from here yeah but we still do have actually higher highs and higher lows being made right higher highs, higher lows being made. So although we've sold off and there was an opportunity to get short here from a um, from a fundamental analysis perspective, both currencies are seen as uh, tapering. So they're both quite strong currencies, right? Uh, looking to appreciate their currencies. So um, for me, not really a, a pair that I'm looking at, but if you are looking to buy the dollar, I'd probably say this is gonna be the the area to start to look for buying and i do think that if you are looking to sell the dollar and buy the canadian dollar i think this actually is a really really nice area to look for any kind of short trades i do like that as a uh, as an area to look for short trades um although uh, technically anyway although fundamentally i'm not really keen on that pair dollar sorry new zealand dollar us dollar and uh we did bounce off of this demand zone right here 
really nice. And in fact, I think I was saying in the group that that area was actually really nice for a, uh, a potential, because we had not only demand, but we had an area of support and resistance, um, institutional level, I guess, uh, because that's where they, uh, you know, are seen trading, right? The bigger moves on a daily time frame chart is where, you know, the institutions definitely are. So that was a really nice area of demand. Um, the bottom area of this area here, this uh, 0 0.6, actually it was a round number, right? So pretty much the 0 0.68 round number is where it started to bounce from. Um, also as well, the New Zealand dollar are looking to high crates. And uh, this is pretty much what we've seen because they are you know starting to high crates I'm going to actually just remove that and then create a new demand zone here and we've also got another one right there as well so any pullbacks to demand I think are going to be really nice buying opportunities although the dollar isn't necessarily the best um, uh, pair to uh, trade against uh, well, the US dollar isn't the best pair to trade against the uh, the New Zealand dollar. I think the New Zealand dollar is 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 miles ahead of the uh, the US dollar in terms of monetary policy. So any pullbacks down to here, I think, are would actually be quite a nice area. And those of you who are in the private mentoring group will recognise this area here as a uh, a breakout CPR as well. So there's there's um, lots going for this for this area um, uh, down here. But if you do want to get short on this currency pair, then I would probably say uh, where we are at now potentially is actually quite nice for a potential short as we did make uh, prices did actually, you know, uh, uh, drop quite severely. So there's definitely a nice hard out perspective um, uh, with price. So but I think the path of the resistance is going to be more to the upside because the New Zealand dollar is one of my buyers. Um, and the currency that I am buying, not necessarily against the dollar, more against the, something like the uh, Swiss franc and the uh, Japanese yen. Moving on to the pound. The pound at the moment, again, we've got two strong currencies, or say strong but stronger currencies, where central banks are looking to potentially hike rates at some point. And uh, JP Morgan seem to um, agree that uh, they uh, move up their UK rate hike forecast after a strong job data. So the Bank of England may boost rates in the first half of 2022. So again, they're looking to appreciate their currency, right? The call is more hawkish, hawkish. Remember what we said about, you know, dovish and hawkish uh, than the median, but follows Bank of America and HSBC. So. JP Morgan Chase brought forward its forecast when, uh, for when the Bank of England may raise interest rates, saying the strength of the UK labour market makes a move likely in the second quarter of 2022. So interesting, very, very interesting. So if that is, again, if that data does support the narrative and there are, you know, um, jobs data still continues to come out, you know, quite robust and strong, then you can pretty much, uh, you know, uh, say that the, the Bank of England will potentially be hiking rates. Now, what does that mean for the pound dollar? For me, um, I think the pound are probably just ahead of the Fed um, in that sense, if they're talking about hiking rates. So any pullbacks, I think, into fresher areas of demand will be really nice buying opportunities. Again, you'd have to really kind of see the data support that narrative, though. Price is deceptive. You can have good news and price can go down can have bad news and price can go you know higher in the short term but in the medium to long term you will definitely see what what the uh the market intends and the way that price was supposed to go so um not a pair that i'm necessarily interested in um on the pound dollar but i am interested in again buying the pound against other weaker currencies so um so yeah i think that's probably where we are if you are looking to short this currency pair right now i think it's a nice technical zone right to get short but again you'd have to really believe that the dollar the us dollar is an absolute bargain at this area against the pound for prices to really kind of reverse with any um uh, uh in, in any you know meaningful way or you've got these areas here to look for short trades for me 
this is a harder pair to you know try to predict um, as far as the direction because you've got two competing currencies so for me it's not a pair that I'm really interested in euro dollar on the other hand is shaping up to be a different story so um, you know we obviously earlier spoke about the um, the Fed looking to taper and the euro um, tapering is just not on the car on on the ECB menu card yet, right? So they're actually lagging behind when it comes to looking at tapering, right? The latest ECB minutes confirm that at least in July, the only thing the EC on the ECB's mind was the new forward guidance and not tapering. The summer of 2021 is clearly the summer of doves, dovish, meaning that they want their currency to potentially uh, devalue and depreciate whereas the um, the Federal Reserve are taking steps to potentially look to appreciate their currency right so um, with that there is a divergence between uh, the the two central banks between the Fed and the ECB and uh, for me the path again of these resistance remains to the downside um, I think if prices do come up to this uh, 119 area and even even better if it comes up to the 119.50 or the one uh, just above that area there the 119.75 if prices can come up this high that's going to be a really nice short and again the data has to support the narrative so um, you have to have at least good data jobs data out for the US and uh, maybe not so good data out for the um uh, for the for, for Europe when it comes to not only jobs but things like inflation um, and um, and overall GDP right now um, you know your options pretty much are you know start to look for potential short trades you know now or the level you know above to get uh, to get short as far as uh, buying the US dollar if you are looking to buy the euro uh, for whatever reason because the euro could come out the ecb could come out and be actually start to be a bit more hawkish if they do t if they do turn hawkish by the way i do think that this is going to be a really 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 good uh zone to look for any kind of buy trades yeah if they turn hawkish at their meeting yeah then i think the upside potential is huge for the euro dollar and i will be switching my bias but it it really is dependent upon um, you know, Euro, um, Euro European uh, Central Bank sentiment and what they see. So, uh, so yeah, let's see what happens with that. But for now, I think the path for least resistance is to the downside. Uh, Euro yen, Euro yen again. This is not paired. I'm really that interested in trading uh, two fairly weak currencies, although the yen is probably the weaker out of the two in a risk on environment in a risk off environment the the, the yen is definitely something you really want to look for uh, uh look to buy and look to short this currency pair but um from a uh, from a risk on perspective i do think that um there are better trades there are better pairs to buy against the uh, the japanese yen but if you are interested in trading this i think that's a decent level for a short trade if you are looking to get long Again, on the euro, I think that's actually decent as well. So, um, not really much to say um, in this uh, for this pair. Aussie dollar and Aussie dollar. Um, there's a bit of proof of value right here. Proof of value meaning that there's definitely some buying, some strong buying going on because we did have this, you know, sharp move to the downside, and all of a sudden we've got a strong reversal. So there's definitely. Uh, um, a lot of buying within this uh, uh, 7150 to 71 round number area so I do think that if you do get a bit of a pullback into this zone here and again with um, with the Australian dollar I think it is a bit undervalued they have suffered from potential you know what's well, a potential but they have suffered from lockdowns but I think they are one of the currencies that if they start to you know get their act together get the vaccine rollout and they really start to outperform i do think the aussie is a uh, is a buy is a, is a really really good buy um uh, from a commodity currency perspective but um again with this pair similar to for example the the, the pound dollar um actually no i wouldn't even say similar to pound dollar i think probably for now i think the 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 us dollar is the one to probably buy for now until you do have um, uh, uh, the Australian dollar 
does start to get some good data, I do think uh, the, the US dollar is probably ahead of the Australian dollar, the RBA, um, when it comes to monetary policy. So part of these resistance is still to the downside. You can see where the trend is, has been, right? And uh, yeah, anything in and around this area, decent shorts. But once the Australian economy does get going and they manage to sort out their uh, their 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 uh, Delta variant and the spreading of their Delta variant in their country, I do think that this this area here is going to be a a, a really great buy against the uh, US dollar. Aussie dollar, again similar. Uh, to the US dollar but I think probably an even better buy because the Japanese yen when it comes to monetary policy is way behind the curve um, so I do think that again any kind of pullbacks to this zone right this 7850 area is going to be a really 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 nice buy a really nice buy if we can get a pullback and in fact, that's probably the, the, the currency. This is the currency pay that I would really pay attention to if we can get some sort of pullback and risk remains on, as well as, um, you know, the Australian uh, economic recovery. I think that's going to be a really nice buy. Um, moving forward, oh, by the way, and just to, again to, to, to talk about the Japanese yen again, the Japanese yen, you'd re really only buy the Japanese yen in a risk off environment. So if you see risk off, there's lots of uncertainty. You know, delta variant starts getting out of hand, then you should see prices actually start to fall. And I think the really the closest area to look for any kind of short trades would be at this eighty one twenty five to eighty one sixty five area. And finally, gold. Now, gold um, reacting to in the short term, I guess, uh, to some dollar weakness. But overall, I think uh, gold may start to sell off a little bit, depending on obviously what the dollar does um, and risk sentiment. Gold is out, bonds are in for investors, Jackson Hole playbook. So fixed income saw biggest inflow in seven weeks, right? Data shows and Fed's power expected to reiterate tapering likely by year end. So bonds are winning over gold in a battle for investors' favored haven favored haven ahead of the jackson hole symposium according to bank of america corporation so um you've got you know the two main stores of value and safe haven asset plays are gold and bonds the the downside to to gold is that they don't pay a yield and bonds do right so generally uh, you would you would tend to have more investors um, who want to make a yield want to make a return on their bonds or on their investment right so 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 bonds government bonds are generally favored over um over gold when it comes to safe haven place now um if if money is flowing out of gold and into bonds then you know basically you should get potentially some sort of uh pullback you know or or, or sell off um especially potentially if the economy the US economy is seen to be growing and um, you know the Fed can get inflation um, under under wraps, right? Um, so that's pretty much if if you start to see got um sorry the U.S. dollar make higher highs, for example, the effect should be actually um, uh, a lower lower gold price as gold appreciates. So with that being said, um, again it's it's a difficult trade for me and something that I wouldn't necessarily look to uh, um, buy or sell, but. It is a way to um, to, uh, to 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 kind of get involved in dollar strength by shorting gold as well. So uh, depending on obviously your you know your approach, why not just buy um, you know the dollar against, for example, the yen or the Swiss franc? Um, you could do that, or you could just short gold in favor of buying the uh, dollar. So, uh, but these are your areas to look for any kind of long or short trades. If you continue to see uh, dollar weakness, then these demand zones will be really nice. And if you do see uh, dollar strength, then currently I think this uh, this this supply zone is decent, uh, or anywhere around here is going to be decent for a uh, a particular uh, short trade. Anyways, guys, that's it for this week. Uh, hope you enjoyed the uh, the analysis. Again, please like, subscribe. 
press that like button and share with your trading colleagues if you have any i know trading can be a lonely game um but if you do share it and it does get out to the uh, to, to to those in the uh, in the internet world anyways guys take it easy have a great week relax it's bank holiday tomorrow chill out um, and then get back to work on the tuesday business as usual so have a good one and speak soon